want to thank uh, Jim Davison for coming here this morning. Our other speaker, uh, Karen Giroux, got called away to do a presentation with the governor this morning at the last minute, so um, she's, she wasn't available. But um, uh, this is the, I think, third time we've done this. As you all know, Cafe Gautam is a 501c3. As an organization, we don't take on any issues, and we try not to put any bias in it. We, one thing we don't do is we don't do uh, debates. And uh, because we don't want to be like Tiger Bay, uh, we want to make sure that we stay in our lane. So what we do instead is we'll invite a set of speakers to speak about one topic, and then we'll invite uh, after that or before that set of speakers to, to have the opposite opinion. In this case, and this is the third time we've done this, uh, we invited All for Transportation um, to speak next week. Uh, we booked Jim first, and then we tried to book All for Transportation. Uh, I spoke to them again yesterday. They're not ready to book yet. Um, as Ron, we were saying, they're going through the County Commission, so when they're ready, they'll come back. Uh, this is probably the hottest issue that we have had in the 10 years or so that I've been involved. Uh, when we invite uh, uh, Jim or, or, or Sharon or some of their friends, we get lots of criticism from the left and pro-transit people to say, why is Tampa, why is Catholic and Tampa anti-trans or anti-tax? And then when we invite the offer transportation people, we get criticism from the other side and say, why are you pro-tax, why are you pro-transit? And the fact is we just want to provide information on both sides. And we, uh, an example is we have lots of presentations on the arts. So if you all know somebody who's against the arts, we're happy to have you speak about it too. <laughs> so, uh, any, any, you want to speak on that? <laughs> okay, with that, uh, Jim Davidson, he has a, a long background, but uh, he, uh, just so you all know, he's an ER doctor. So he's very well educated. He's spoken here before on COVID. Uh, but he works up in New Tampa, has been very involved in politics over the years and very involved in this issue. So you can say more about yourself, but that's the 30 seconds. Well, thanks, Bill. And uh, thanks to uh, the board for Catholic on Tampa for having us here today. And thank you for showing up and showing your interest in transportation and your desire to know the facts. And that's the title of this is How to Pay for Transportation Without Raising Taxes, just the facts. And you're entitled to your own opinion, but not your own facts. The facts are the facts, and that's the way it is. Now, Bill's right, this has been one of the most contentious problems, probably in Hillsborough County since I've lived here. And I moved here in 1993 to New Tampa, so I'm well aware of what congestion is, and growth, and lack of transit, and trains, and all that. I'm originally from northeastern Pennsylvania. I went to medical school in Philadelphia. So I know all about trains and buses and missing the bus and missing the train and who's paying for the transit and what's going on. So without any further ado, I'd like to uh, start in with what we're here for. And he, Bill, as Bill said, the Board of County Commissioners had a meeting on uh, this past Wednesday and they passed a one cent sales tax to be placed on the ballot with the exact same spending silos. That means a certain amount of money has to go here, a certain amount of money has to go there, a certain amount of money has to go here, as was in the 2018 sales tax that was declared unconstitutional. One of the things that came out of that meeting was they have $567 million that they have in escrow. And they're not, they haven't given it back. How it's going to be given back, the legislature is starting to get involved, but it hasn't been settled, and we'll know more in the fall. But it's probably unlikely that it will be settled before the election in November. So, right for the title of this was How to Pay for Transportation Without Taxes. So, I wanted to go over a few things. Everybody knows how bad the roads are, how unsafe the roads are. We've been told that we have the worst transit system in the United States. We also know about politicians who refuse to prioritize such an important issue as transit. And that has been going on, regardless of the party, for the past 25 years, at least since I've lived here. Except uh, there's one person in the room, uh, former Commissioner Merman, who came up with a transportation policy, which I actually helped uh, the board nudge him along to do, uh, back in 2016. And it was an $812 million transportation policy. 
And even though there were assurances by the county administrator at the time, Mike Merrill, that this wasn't a bait and switch, that's exactly what happened. They took the $812 million policy and canceled it after they passed the sales tax. And all that money that was supposed to go into transportation from 2017 to 2026, <clears throat> they only got about the first three years in. So where does that leave us now? Well, the plan that uh, I'm sure, how many went to the public meetings that they had around the county? Oh, all right, well, some of these things will be new. Uh, I gave you handouts because it was tough uh, seeing the board. I wasn't sure if they had a PowerPoint. But the first page of your handout is the first storyboard that was at that public meeting. Now, the county commission's public meetings only had to do with transportation and the needs in unincorporated Hillsborough County. Didn't deal with transit, didn't deal with the cities, didn't deal with anything. This was the first story, and on it, you'll see a pile of numbers, very impressive, about what a one cent sales tax was supposed to do. What were the performance metrics of that sales tax? I can tell you right now, none of those are true. Not a single number. That's kind of a, that's a big statement to make back today, isn't it? As we go on, you will see why that is true. These are advertisements to get you to pass a one cent sales tax. It's really, the one that really upsets me the most is the 35% decrease in crashes and fatalities. Back in 2018, I'm sure all of you got flyers. You'll be home in time for dinner if you pass the tax. We will decrease the deaths on our roadways by 35%. Not true. This represents the MPO's 2045 long range transportation plan. In that plan is a lot more than just a one cent sales tax. <clears throat> to pay for this, to pay for those numbers, you would have to include all of the CIT tax, which comes up for uh, Rebid in 2026, a hundred percent to go into transportation, and a hundred percent of the gas taxes. Every penny would have to go in. That is not financially possible. If you did that, you wouldn't have any new police cars, you wouldn't have any new fire trucks, you wouldn't be able to build fire stations, parks, and it just goes on and on and on. And the gas taxes have never, ever been used at more than 50% into the capital improvement programs in the county. So right off the bat, they're losing $3 billion that they cannot spend, yet they put it in there and used it to generate those numbers. This statistic here, reduced delay by 44%. That's not from today. Although it represents, it makes it look like they're gonna do this in Things are going to get better, and the congestion is going to be 44% better than it is today. That's 44% from what it's going to be in 2045. The congestion with this plan is going to get worse. The 30-minute average, or in Hillsborough County, the average commute is about 28 minutes. It's probably going to go to 30, and probably 32 if you pass the one cent sales tax. Yet they're going to advertise it that they're going to get you home in time for dinner and that they're going to save 35% of the fatalities on the road. If I were to tell you that their own numbers, that 35% fatalities, the deaths on local roadways is actually going to go up. In fact, in their calculations, if we did not spend a single penny between now and 2045, there would be less deaths on the road than there have been the last three years. That is their numbers, not mine. But they're going to tell you that they're going to reduce it by 
That's 35% from the deaths in 2045. There'll be just as many deaths, their best scenario, as there were in like 2011, 2012. They're not going to zero. It's not going to happen. They can't make those pavement roads and this 50% decrease in um, bus uh, malfunctions. Sounds like a great number, 50%. That means it goes from eight to four. That's it. For $18 billion, they're going to drop four bus incidents a week. Does that make more sense? No. So that look was the first one, and, and why the county was using these numbers, which is a 20-year plan and a 30-year tax, you have to ask them. The second piece of your handout is what the county says they're going to be financing. This is the county's plan for unincorporated Hillsborough County. It's their number. $4.25 billion, they can do everything we need over 30 years. $4.25 billion, remember that number. Now they're saying in the green, from 2023 to 2032, they have about $347 million. After that, for the next 20 years, they have about $520 million. That's an existing taxes now. That's what they think they're going to have. The only problem is, the only thing they counted were gas taxes and mobility fees, which you can see at the bottom. This is their storyboard. We do not make this. Okay? This is the county's numbers. The only two revenue streams they used for existing revenues were the present gas tax that we pay, and mobility fees. And they highly underestimated the mobility fees. So that leaves us with $3.38 billion deficit. That sounds like a huge number. Oh my God, what are we going to do? Well, to fill that in, the county has come up with two revenue streams a 1% sales tax, which will generate $2.9 billion and a new five cent gas tax, which will generate about $550 million, which will put them way over the $4.25 billion that they need when you add it all up. So this is the county's plan. In the MPO's plan, they needed to have include all of the gas tax and all of the CIT tax to get to their make their plan work. So let's compare the plans and we'll give you the four plan. That's what we're calling it. The four plan for Hillsborough County Transportation. And that's save our, our fix our roads first. This is the third uh, number of your handout. And on it, at the very top, you'll see the revenue streams. You'll see the title of the plan itself. And then you'll see which revenue streams those plans use. We are, <coughs> Hillsborough County plan, the one you saw on Wednesday, those are the revenue streams they use. They're saying that existing revenues from the present gas tax over 30 years, you are only going to be able to use $182 million. Yet the MPO states that you're going to be able to use $1.454 billion. That, that's quite a discrepancy. <laughs> and that's over 20 years. Although we estimated it for 30 years to come to that number. And we put it in present day dollars. These are all in present day dollars. The MPO plan by federal statute has to be put in what they call YOE dollars, which are year of expenditure dollars. We convert them back to present day dollars. That's how they do it. 
they put into present day dollars, then they convert it over to your expenditure dollars. Mobility fees, <clears throat> I didn't tell you this, but the, there's been a metamorphosis of the county's gas plan over the last four weeks because we were asking certain questions. So in the beginning, the total amount of funds that were generated, I think it came out to like $847 million originally, there was only $709 million. But because we started asking questions, they changed the revenue streams. In fact, on the last board, you did not even see the revenue stream slotted in. Take it from me. That comes out to $61.5 million a year, or every 10 years, for gas taxes. Yet they are going to collect in excess over that 30 year period, $1.5 billion. Just the county, that doesn't include the city, Plant City, and any municipalities. That's just this unincorporated hills we're doing. Grants they had at 100, which they had in the first 10 years, but then just left it out. Originally, they had it in for, for 30 years, and it came to 300 million, but they just left it out because they couldn't. They will tell you that they can't estimate how much grant we're going to get. Yet, if you look back, $10 million a year is, is pretty close to what the average is. It goes up and it goes down. Their five cent gas tax, new five cent gas tax, will raise $518 million, and the 1% sales tax, which everybody is anxious about, the county share, and this is their calculation, not mine, will raise for the county over 30 years $2.9. $4 billion over 30 years in, in constant dollars. It gives you a total of $4.326 billion. Well, that's more money than they said they needed. They only needed $4.25. Let's see how that compares to the long-range transportation plan that everybody assumes we're supposed to be following. Correct? I mean, don't they market that? This is the transportation plan for the county. This is what we tell the federal government. This is how we funnel the federal dollars into the county. The long-range transportation plan expanded to four to 30 years. The CIT tax, which does not exist in the county's plan or estimates. The MPO estimates that the county will take in and spend on transportation $2.562 billion. Just a slight error. Just a little bit off. The gas tax, as I said, $1.454 billion. Mobility fees, they only estimated at 2.7. And the reason they did that was when they made this up, they were only collecting about four or five million dollars a year in mobility fees. This year and next year, the mobility fee collections will be in excess of $30 million. $30 million. And it's going to be that way probably for the foreseeable future. Originally, in the 2040 plan, the MPO said that they were going to raise, the mobility fees were going to raise $587 million. So they lowered that by over $300 million in the next plan. So that leaves our plan, the floor plan. And what is the floor plan? Well, it's something that accommodates and does everything that this plan says and this plan says without raising taxes. And it's more accurate and you can trust it because we don't make those assumptions that there's not going to be this and there's we're going to spend 100% of that. In our plan, we use that for on taxes. Oh, the art man for on taxes. Can't be. Well, there are. Every year, they have what they call a flag policy. And the slack in the budget for Hillsborough County is somewhere around 1% to 2%. That's 30 to $60 million a year that they don't spend, that they give back in certain ways. Look, two years ago, the Sheriff's Department gave them back $22 million in one year. So there's, there's money. It depends on how you prioritize it. And in July of every year, they have the commission.
commissioners get to flag the extra money and put it in places they want to put it. This past year, Stacy White was the only one to put money into Lithia Pinecrest and Rose. I think it was about $2 million out of $25 million. The commissioners put it every place else for transportation. So there's plenty of that more money. They just don't want to spend it on transportation. Our plan to get to that $1.6 billion starts with $10 million the first year, and every year you add $3 million to it. Over 30 years, that brings you to $1.6 billion. Oh, that's a lot of money. That's about 2% of the total amount of ad valorem taxes the county, unincorporated as Grove County, will collect over that 30 year period, 2%. They can't afford 2% on one of the most critical infrastructure pieces in the whole county. That's impossible. Impossible but true. The next figure we have is the CIT tax. Hart's gonna love this, so hold on. The CIT tax has to come up for <clears throat> reauthorization in 2026. It's a half cent sales tax, cannot be raised because it's tied in with the half cent indigent tax, so it maxes out at 1%. The CIT tax currently is divided, 25% goes to the schools. Originally it was meant to build Ray J Stadium. They consumed about 11% of the, 11, 12% of it, and the rest went to the county and the municipalities the county got about 73, 74% of their share. In ours, we took the CIT tax, we gave the school their 25%, we gave Hart 10% off the top. That's about $550 million in current year dollars, and it'll be 750 to 800 million over 30 years in YOE dollars can only be used for capital expenditures, so your capital budget is pretty much looking pretty good. And all the capital reserve money, or all the capital funds that you use, or general funds you use in your capital budget, can now be spent elsewhere. So that's how we got there. Gas tax, <clears throat> if you include a ad valorem tax, when the county does that, they increase the amount of gas tax that they spend in the capital improvement budget. Because if they take the ad valorem tax out, the gas taxes get spent on salaries, cutting the grass alongside the road, and fixing a few potholes which aren't included in the capital improvement budget. That's where all your gas tax money goes. So out of the $50 million a year the county collects, they only put 6.4 million in the capital improvement budget to resurface roads and repair our roads. We took about a $17 million a year amount, a little, little less than triple what the, the county said, but about the average of what they contributed in the last five years. We got $500 million in gas tax. Mobility fees, as I said, they're collecting $30 million a year plus. I think, it's, I think in the next two or three years, it's supposed to go to $38 million. Yet the county told you in that program that they have, they were only going to collect $7.5 million a year. That's it. You can look it on the budget, what they're collecting and what they're telling you they're going to spend. It's, it's, all this stuff is publicly available. Grants 300, that's what I told you about, the original grant, that's the original amount of money that the county had in that they took out. <clears throat> and then other. Other is things like uh, the BP fund money, uh, one-time funds that they put in there, the uh, COVID relief money that they put in there. They spent $35 million of it on resurfacing. So that's what other is, and that average is about $8 million a year or so. It only comes out to $225 million over uh, 30 years. Our numbers, $4 billion $566 million. $300 million more than you need. 
and we haven't raised a penny, and Hart got $800 million. And we haven't even talked about what they're planning to do with the illegal tax they've already collected, which may go back to the county and put into transportation. We haven't talked about the $1.2 trillion federal infrastructure tax that the, the state of Florida is supposed to get around $19 billion. $13 billion is supposed to go to road re reconstruction and bridge reconstruction. We haven't even talked about that. That has to be spent in the next five years. They're not mentioning that at all. They're not counting it at all. But it's there. Just like all these revenue streams are there, they just neglected to tell you. The same people that voted for this MPO plan and that revenue stream back in 2019 voted on Wednesday for this. Now how can someone that voted this revenue stream tell you that that revenue stream is the one that counts? It's not possible. There's no way that you can justify making those two votes. So, we haven't talked about a lot of things, about gentrification, displacement, how it affects, it's a, it's a regressive tax, it affects the poor. If you want to, and we have to improve transportation, we haven't talked about tax increment finance. We haven't talked about the CRA money that's available. We haven't talked about tons, tens of millions of dollars. This year, the city of Tampa will collect $42 million in CRA. And we haven't even talked about tax increment finance. Pasco County tax increment finances, 18% of their growth in annual loan taxes. All of it goes to transportation. This is we, a very complex subject. This is zero. So uh, I know I put that to sleep, but uh, that's our plan. We can do everything that the county said they need a one cent sales tax and a five cent gas tax for without raising a penny of taxes. As Bill said um, in his introduction, the one topic that comes up in just about every presentation we've had at Cafe from Tampa for the last 13 years, the word transportation comes up. I don't see any hands yet, and I know there's a lot of questions. 